Merrick Garland tried to insist yesterday, Megan, that uh, he's doing everything he can to combat crime. This is simply not true, though. And to your point about the BLM protesters, look at what the Justice Department has done. The Justice Department has gone into court and has filed motions asking for lenient sentences or no sentences for rioters who torched buildings, who assaulted cops. I mean, you talk about, again, misplaced priorities. They're asking for those folks to get off easy or not to be charged at all, not to be sentenced at all. Meanwhile, they're out here knocking down the door, beating down the door of pro-life demonstrators. And I'm not making this up. And we yesterday I asked Garland about the 25 to 30 SWAT agents, FBI SWAT agents who were sent to the home of this oh, gentleman. I have that. Let me, let me interrupt yeah. you, Senator, so we can play it. I'll show yeah. the audience the moment you're referring to, and then you can pick it up on the back side. SOT 4. Are you telling me that in your opinion as attorney general, it was objectively necessary to use 20 or 30 SWAT style agents with long guns and ballistic shields for these people? What I'm saying is that decisions about how to go about this were made on the ground by FBI agents. So you're saying you don't know? I'm, I'm saying what I just said. That Which is that you're abdicating responsibility? I'm not abdicating responsibility. Then give me the answer. Philadelphia District Attorney declines to prosecute. The private suit's dismissed. You use an unbelievable show of force with guns that I just note liberals usually decry. We're supposed to hate long, long guns and assault-style weapons. You're happy to deploy them against Catholics and innocent children. Happy to. And then you haul them into court and a jury acquits him in one hour. That was a pro-life protester that he threw the book at after the Philadelphia authorities decided he didn't do anything. Let's move on. It was like some minor altercation outside of a, an abortion clinic. This guy was a pro-life, pro, pro-life protester, and, and his son had been harassed by a 72-year-old guy. They got into a scuffle. And again, the Philadelphia authorities were like, this is a nothing. No one was hurt. Move on. And then Merrick Garland said, oh, no, 30 SWAT officers or some sort of officers at that guy's door. And this is after Megan, the same protester, Mark Houck, after he said, listen, if you're going to arrest me, which is outrageous, but if you're going to arrest me, I'll turn myself in. He offered to turn himself in. And what did the Justice Department do? They sent to his home in the early morning hours. He has seven children. In the early morning hours when the kids are not yet at school, they're still all in the house. He sends 30 SWAT officers there with their guns, pounding on the doors, demanding to come out. The mother has talked about this. His wife, Mrs. Houck, has said the children were, of course, terrified. And Megan, that's the point. It was meant to be terrifying. It was meant to strike fear into the hearts of pro-life demonstrators, of conservatives, of Catholics, of Christians everywhere. They're trying to send a message, which is don't cross the government. Don't cross the Biden administration. If you disagree with us, you keep your mouth shut. Contrast that to what they're doing with the BLM and Antifa protesters. It's just sickening, Megan, and it's got to stop. And that's why there needs to be accountability. It's so true. I mean, what kind of a world is it in which the BLM protesters are collecting millions as the one pro-life protester gets the book thrown at him with 30 federal officers, guns drawn, entering his home with, as he put it, my seven babies are right here. And the wife, too, saying, I'm right. They had guns drawn on me for a man who would have surrendered himself, who was found not guilty in the end anyway. So it's like you had the right guy in the hot seat. You were asking all the right questions. And you mentioned the Catholic thing. Now, I am a Catholic, and this I objected to this whole thing. And at first, I was like, that can't be. Come on, that's some, that's nonsense, right? It's not nonsense. It actually was brought to the attention of the public by a whistleblower who was inside the FBI who saw this memo, I think, out of Virginia that, that actually called for the targeting of Catholic churches, in particular the ones where they say the Latin Mass, as like the new radicalized mosque kind of place. Like, this is where we need to go to find homegrown extremists of the white supremacist type. So you got a chance to ask Merrick Garland about this yesterday. Here's a little bit. I have a couple of them. Uh, Here's soundbite three. How many informants do you have in Catholic churches across America? I don't know. And I don't believe we have any informants aimed at Catholic churches. We have a rule against uh, investigations based on First Amendment um, activity, and uh, uh, Catholic churches are obviously uh, First Amendment activity. Well, but I don't know the specific answer to you, you don't know the specifics of anything, it seems, but apparently on your watch, this Justice Department is targeting Catholics, targeting people of faith, specifically for their faith views. And Mr. Attorney General, I'll just say to you, it's a disgrace. Well, Senator, he has a rule. 
You're, I mean, are you not satisfied? He has a rule against doing that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Just take him at his word. Megan, here's the deal. Here's the facts. It's an FBI memo written on the 23rd of January of this year. We're not talking about years ago or in some land far, far away. We're talking about right here, 23rd of January. The FBI recommends recruiting informants in Catholic parishes that they, the FBI, designate as traditionalists. Now, whatever that means, I mean, they're making up the terms as they go along. So whatever they consider to be a traditional Catholic parish, they say it is a recruiting opportunity for observation, that means spying, and for informants. This is the most unbelievable document to be written in the United States of America. And the fact that Merrick Garland brushed it off and says he doesn't really know the details. Did you notice, though, when I asked him, how many informants do you have? He said he didn't know. He didn't say they didn't have any. Mm -hmm. He just said he didn't know. I mean, this, again, the priorities here, if you're a churchgoer, you're a religious believer, then they think you're the problem. But if you're a rioter and you want to go burn down some buildings and assault cops, hey, go for it. You know, that's social justice. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it does make you look around. I don't go to a church, or at least I don't go to the mass where they say the traditional Latin mass. But it does make you kind of look around the church a little differently. Like, who who could it be? People are probably looking at me, wondering whether I could be the person too. It's just so sick. It's like, you don't, what, I mean, if, you're, if you've got to scrounge the pews of Catholic churches to find extremists, then we're doing pretty well right now in this country. We're doing pretty well in fighting these radical ideologies. Yeah, that's exactly right. And again, to think of people of faith as the problem here and with what we're facing, people of faith are the solution. You know, I, I would just venture to say that those who are who are going to, and I'm not Catholic myself, but I am a Christian, and those who are going to mass or those who are going to church and are doing so faithfully, they're probably the answer to a lot of the problems we have. Certainly good neighbors, I mean, the folks who are the bedrock of our communities and to treat them as if they are terrorists or potential terrorists need to be spied upon tells you everything you need to know about this administration's priorities. It's no wonder that they want to erase our history. They want to say this is a systemically racist nation and all the rest. They want to turn everything upside down and, and go send SWAT teams to believers' homes. I mean, it is truly insane. But Megan, I, I, I really do believe that sunshine is a great disinfectant. This is why these hearings are important. You got to bring this out to the light because as you pointed out, we'd only know about this memo because of a whistleblower. If it weren't for him or her, we would never know. You got to bring this out into the public so people can see what these folks are actually doing so they can see what Merrick Garland is actually doing. And when you see it, it's indefensible. Mm, and just to correct myself, it was a former FBI agent turned whistleblower uh, who published the document on uncoverdc.com. That's how we first found out. So you've heard me talk about Bonner Private Wine Partnership, right? They have these incredibly rare Malbecs that you've got to try. If you enjoy a glass of wine, try these wines. From the extreme altitudes of Argentina, the flavor's unlike any other. Blackberry, leather, smoke, a little dark cherry in there. And these wines are nearly impossible to get on your own. The producers deep in the Andes Mountains make limited quantities. The best part? They have cut out the middleman, so you are not going to deal with a big markup. Today, we have a great offer for you. If you visit bonnerprivatewines.com slash MKS, you will not only get the wine for over 50% off plus free shipping, you'll also get a bonus bottle of small batch limited production wine from their exclusive wine cellar. That's four bottles for the price of three. It's a deal that's hard to turn down if you're a wine lover like I am. Just visit bonner, B-O-N-N-E-R, privatewines.com slash MKS to claim your bonus bottle and become a part of America's most unique wine club. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.